Well, good morning. good morning. Hey, welcome home to Cassidy. My name is Stephen Mitchell, and I do have the privilege of being the lead pastor here, uh, mostly because it's awesome to be a part of a church that is serious about making a difference in the world around us. We're serious about loving people where they are and sharing Jesus with everybody that we come in contact with, not by explaining all the ways that they're wrong, but by instead loving people and, and making a difference in the world around us. My hope is uh, that if you're a visitor here, that you first felt welcome, whether you're online or in person, uh, and that now you feel the presence of Jesus Christ right here with us, that we are experiencing right now a movement from God. We're not waiting for God to do something cool in our community. We're living in a moment where God is doing something cool through us. And so we want to invite you on that journey with us. Whether you're new here or uh, online or in person, we, we want you to know before you get into, into community with us, hey, we're not perfect and we realize it, but we know the one who is and that's Jesus Christ. And so we want to invite you on a journey with us to grow in relationship to God, to grow into relationship with one another and to go in the world sharing God's love and grace with everyone we come in contact with. That's why we've been talking uh, this, this month about one another. Uh, one was an initiative, the one initiative we started a year ago. And for those of you that don't know, that are new, uh, I'll give you a little background. We said, hey, we want a scoreboard that tells us how we're doing at building God's kingdom. We set up a scoreboard that had 100 light bulbs on it, and it was cleverly shaped just like this. Uh, each, each of those light bulbs, we had 99 white light bulbs and one orange light bulb. Uh, and it, it's up here too, in case you <laughs> wanted to look there. Uh, but the whole idea was we wanted to be faithful to what Jesus said. Jesus said, I leave the 99 safely and then go after the one who is lost. And we wanted to say, hey, what can we do to do just that? How can we live boldly into God's kingdom building mindset invited by God to build his kingdom right here, right now. How can we do that? What are things we can do? And we had new people that were uh, entered into relationship with Jesus Christ that have been baptized and are now part of our community. We had people that, that were far from God, that, that grew up in the church, and now they're coming back and they're being a part of what God is doing. We've had people that have said, you know what, I've been going to church my whole life, and, and yet I never really felt like I was part of anything that God was doing, and now they are. And we've had new members, we've had old members, we've had all kinds of things that God is doing, not to mention that we've reached out in service to our community by building houses in Juarez, Mexico. Uh, maybe you notice our community is pretty big. Uh, building houses in Juarez, Mexico, we've uh, given over 60,000 lunch, lunch, dinner, and weekend meals for students. Um, we have done a ton of work for the building of God's kingdom. And so we wanted to celebrate that because the sign got all lit up and it took a year, but we lit every one of those light bulbs and this is just the starting point. We, wanted to, we want you to know that, hey, at the end of this service today, uh, starting Monday, you're going to notice the sign isn't going to be quite as lit up as it was today. Why? Because we're starting over. We want to continue using that as a scoreboard to say, hey, not only are we now in the one initiative, now we're going to be focused on one another. And we said in order to do that, in order to keep doing what Jesus wants us to do, we have to be welcoming. We have to welcome one another so that they can come into relationship with Jesus. And when I say welcome one another, I don't just mean welcome them into the building. I mean welcome one another while we're out and about in the community. Be nice to people. Love people where they are. That's what we say we're after. Second, we need to encourage one another that we need to, to lift one another up to, to know that life is not a, a, a box of chocolates. Well, maybe it is because you never know what you're going to get. Uh, I did not know I was going to quote Forrest Gump today. So you're welcome. Um, now you can go home and watch it. But it, we need to truly encourage one another so that, that together we can be the people that God wants. But we need to encourage those that are outside of relationship with Jesus, not by telling them all the things that they're doing wrong, but instead by loving them where they are. And we said we needed to restore one another, not to hoard the grace that we've been given, but to share it with everyone 
we meet, everyone we interact with, everyone that cuts us off in traffic, everyone that gives us that one finger that tells us how much they love us uh, at the grocery store or wherever. Maybe my, my grocery store adventures are a little bit more adventurous than yours. I don't know. Uh, and today we want to talk about serving one another because all of these things are what makes the church, the, 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 the body of Christ in the world. It, it's what means that we follow Jesus. And so we need to get this all in order because serving someone is pretty easy when it's planned. However, when it's inconvenient, serving someone can be hard. Uh, if, if somebody calls me, now I have a truck now. For those of you that didn't know, I got a truck. I've been waiting for it for years. Anyway, um, when somebody calls me and they're like, hey, I know you have a truck. Can you help me move something? If they call and say, in October, I'm going to be moving, can you help me? I'd be like, yeah. Why? Because that's a long way off, and I might forget about it before then. You might not move. Who knows? Uh, I'll agree to it. And then on uh, that October date, I'm like, dang it, it's here. And then I actually will go and do it, but I planned for it. What's crazy is serving someone when it's inconvenient now, that's hard. If somebody calls and says, hey, Steve, can you come help me move this? Drop everything you're doing because I need to move something later today. It interrupts everything I have planned, my schedule, my hopes, my desires, and it's just downright inconvenient. And so when, when we are, are hit with that kind of scenario, uh, serving others can be a little bit more difficult. We can, we can maybe push back a little bit more. I had the opportunity a couple years ago to go to Orlando, Florida for a conference. Uh, and when I flew into Orlando, Florida, uh, my, my daughter was in, uh, is in Tampa, and so she was going to school at the time. She came up and visited me. And what was crazy, if you've ever been to Florida, you know that sometimes it rains like every single day at the same time. Well, we also happened to be blessed with way more rain than they were used to. And so the streets are flooding, things were crazy, and it would go from pitch black outside to then beautiful outside. Well, we went through the conference and we made our way to the airport and our flight was supposed to take off at around noon. So my, my buddy and I get to the airport because we, we shared a, a room. Uh, we get to the airport and we're supposed to fly out at 10. Uh, but lo and behold, that's when the sky decided to open up and rain poured, on, uh, poured out of the sky and, and everything got put on hold. So we were at the airport from about 10 a.m., until, because we wanted to be there a couple hours early for the flight, because, you know, it's Orlando. Uh, and if you've never flown in there, just consider yourself lucky. Uh, at noon, we were told, oh, the flight's been delayed. It'll be a couple hours. A and then the flight's been delayed. It'll be a couple hours. By 10 o'clock that night, they finally said, hey, the flight has been canceled. I was like, couldn't you have done that at like 10 in the morning? Because then I could figure out what I'm supposed to do. So then I'm, I'm sitting there at the house or at the airport going, oh, I don't have any place to go. And my buddy and I are like, well, we, the, the cheap airline that we paid for isn't going to pay for a hotel. So what are we going to do? And I had a friend who lived in, lives in Orlando, and, and I had, she had seen that I was saying, hey, I'm in Orlando looking at this conference. She was like, hey, you should come and check out, because they lived in St. Louis and then moved to Florida, you should come and check out the house and hang out with Doug and I, which is her husband. And I was like, yeah, the, the conference is jam-packed. Well, now at 10 o'clock at night, I'm like, well, hello, Michelle. How are you? Uh, it's, it's great to hear your voice. I'm so excited to be in your town. Can you come to the airport and get me? and my friend, and give us a place to stay for the night, and then take us back to the airport tomorrow. And here was the kicker. It's 10. She gets there. It takes about 40 minutes for her to get to the airport from her house. And then on top of that, on top of that, there was a, about a 40-minute line to get in because they canceled all the flights. So I'm standing there waiting, and we get in the car, and that's when we're, we're, we're trying to book our flights back and that's when we find out as she's driving us to her house that the flight back leaves at six in the morning. So now she has volunteered to get us to her house and I was like, well, just take an Uber. And she was like, Uber doesn't run out here at that time. I got you. Don't worry about it. So she wakes up at three in the morning to take us back to the airport, drops us off, 
then goes home, eats breakfast with her husband, and goes to work for the entire day. You want to talk about somebody that has stepped out of their happy place and allowed inconvenience to just wash over them so that they could serve somebody else? That's what Michelle did for me and for my friend. And the truth is, when someone serves you in a selfless capacity like that, you remember that. It sticks with you. My, my guess is uh, that, that somebody has done something like that for you, and, and you're remembering what that was like, or you remember who it was, least, uh, at, at least you remember who it was and what they have done. And we remember that because it's so meaningful to us, because we know that they have gone above and beyond to help us out, to serve us. And, and, and maybe it was a parent or a friend Maybe it was somebody in your family, or quite frankly, maybe it was even a total stranger who rescued you when you were stranded on the side of the road. Whatever it is, service is key to how we need to, to live out our faith. When we see other people doing that, that shouldn't be the rarity. Friends, that should be our standard. We should be living in service to others. Now, what does service mean? Service is for our definition, because if you look online and try to define service, there are so many things that are being said about service. It can talk about wait staff. It can talk about restaurants. It can talk about whatever. For our understanding, service is giving of yourself for the good of others. Giving of yourself for the good of others. Uh, and at its core... Serving is altruistic. That means that it's acting out of genuine concern for the welfare of others, not acting out of, of any uh, alternate mindset of, I'm doing this so that I can get. It's, I'm doing this because I love them and they need some help at this point. It's acting out of that genuine concern for the welfare of others. And often it's putting their needs above your own. That's where it gets sticky, right? That's where it gets difficult. It's compassionate, uh, understanding or empathizing with someone's situation, knowing that they have stuff going on in their life and they need some help, and, and feeling motivated, motivated to relieve their distress. Or it's selfless, and it's selfless, not or, and it's selfless, providing help or service without seeking personal gain, not so that you get reimbursed, but so that they know you care. This is why service is a key part of God's plan. Service is exactly what Jesus was all about. And it's exactly what we see in both the Old and the New Testament. The Hebrew Bible, God is talking about serving others. You're a blessing so that you can bless others. You're, you're supposed to be focused on those that are on the fringe, on the outside, supposed to be focused on the foreigner that is within your country bounds. This is what God is talking to the people about in the Old Testament. In other words, we bring glory to God by serving others. Now, let that sink in for a minute. We bring glory to God by serving others. How have we been sharing God's glory lately? How are we doing? That's really the question that's at the heart of this. How, and it's not a question for you. I'm not like, how are you doing with this? It's for us. How are we doing? How am I doing? How do we live this out? This is at the core of what we're trying to do. And what's cool is if you look at the Old Testament and you read the Old Testament, uh, we're going to read from the prophet Isaiah here in a minute, but when you look at the Old Testament, prophets were concerned with two things. God raised men and women up to counsel and to correct the, the kings and the people of Israel so that they could get back on track in relationship with God. And they did this with two messages bunch of people over the course of a bunch of time, but the two messages they had were similar between all of the prophets. One, idolatry. Don't have any other gods before God. Don't, don't let anything get in the way of your relationship with God. The second is service. It's a compassion for those that are on the edges. Don't forget to take care of the poor and the widow of the foreigner that is in your land. Don't forget 
that I have called you so that you might be a blessing to others. Isaiah says it this way, if it clicks over. Uh, and if you spend yourself, spend yourself. I love the way that he says that. If you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. <laughs> the, the idea is this, Isaiah the prophet calls us to recognize that by serving others, our darkness and the world's darkness will diminish. Why? Because we're not focused on ourselves. Selfishness brings about a whole lot of darkness because you're never satisfied when you're selfish. But when you're selfless, when you're focused on others, it's not the same thing. And we share God's light with others. And by, uh, what did they say? When, when it rains, all boats rise. When the tide comes in, all boats rise. When we do good for the building of God's kingdom, it builds everyone up. Jesus himself came to serve. Through his life, death, and resurrection, he serves us in a way that we can't even fully understand by giving himself to us and incorporating us into the body of Christ. On the night in which he was going to be arrested and taken for trial, he, he did something crazy for his disciples. He washed their feet. And it, he finishes this up in John's gospel. It says, now that I, your Lord and teacher, now that I, the most important person in the room, have washed your feet, you should wash also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus says, hey, I, 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 I want you to understand what I'm doing. This isn't, this isn't a, uh, an idea like this doesn't mean that we should all break out into spontaneous foot washing, right? It doesn't mean that Jesus is concerned about the cleanliness of our tootsies. What it means is Jesus is concerned about our ability to serve others. Jesus took on the role of a servant, not just any servant, but the least servant in the household, the one who would wash the feet of those who came. Jesus, the most important person, arguably in all of history, takes on the role of a servant, the least servant, and washes the feet of the disciples so that they can understand just how important service is to Jesus. Jesus took the role of a servant and washed the feet of his disciples so that he could paint a picture of the action of service to echo the words that he had said. He wanted them to have uh, not just knowledge of it, but to have an experience of what that looked like, because that's what he calls us to do. Jesus ultimately gave his life for us, and before that, in Mark's gospel, it says this, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, to give his life for you and for me so that we might have life for the very first time. Jesus came to serve, not just to those who are, are, are at the, the crucifixion, not just to those who were disciples, not just to us in this building, but to all people that they might come to know his love and grace. Jesus served with no limitation he did not say, I'm, I'm going to serve you if. He said, I'm going to serve you because, because I love you and I see the worth that is in you. And so he serves. And that's what he calls us to do. Service should be at the core of our hearts if we are trying to be like Jesus. Service should be the outpouring of our response to Jesus' love. We love God and we serve one another. Paul writes to the church in Galatia and says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Don't squander it. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Serve one another. Paul says we're called to be free, 
so that we can serve one another. And we can get to that same question that the, 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 the rich young ruler had for Jesus. Who is my neighbor? Who is the one another Jesus is talking about? Well, Jesus' answer for him, everyone is your neighbor, is the same for us. Everyone is the one another that Jesus wants us to serve. And Peter, uh, the, the letter that Peter wrote, it says this, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. That means, friends, that the gifts that we, the church, have received through the power of the Holy Spirit are to be used in service to others, one another, sharing grace in its various forms. Uh, we, we hear Peter calling us to, to step out and to do something about the grace that we have received. Not to hoard it, not to hold it back, but instead to serve others because He, Jesus, has first served us. Again, the truth is this. Serving others glorifies God. Serving others allows us to lift others up, to share what God has done in our lives by loving them where they are, regardless of who they are. So how do you serve? Really, the question comes down to this. How do we serve? What does it look like for us to live this out? How do we make a difference in the world? How do we serve uh, without, without holding back? And, and the first is this. We need to pray for who and how to serve. Now, I want to pause right here and say this isn't an excuse to say, oh, Lord, please tell me who and how to serve. Oh, he didn't say anything. I don't have to do anything, right? That's not how it works. It's not an excuse. Honestly, if you pray, Lord, how should I serve and who should I serve, and he doesn't answer, just take that to mean everybody. Your list is too long for him to be specific. But I have found in my life that if I start my day, hey, show me where I can, where I can do the most good. Who can I serve and how can I serve? that God is pretty faithful in revealing that, even to the detriment of my schedule, my time, and my plan for the day. And why do we care? Because Jesus has called us to it. Jesus says, I want you to serve the way that I have served you. So what do we do? Okay, we've prayed. Now what do we do? Look for a group that is already doing something that is passionate, a passion of yours on your heart. Join a group that serves. Here at Cassidy, we have so many groups that are doing so much good in this community that it makes my heart glad. We have folks that get together every Wednesday. It's coming to an end because the school season is coming to an end. School season. The school year is coming to an end. Uh, but the, we go out there and we pack sack lunches and, and well, meals for the weekend for students. We gather Wednesday mornings at 8.30 in the morning. We're packing bags and backpacks so that students can have meals over the weekend. We have groups that go to least of these and, and are there either helping to stock and stack things at least of these or, or providing food for families. We give through the church to all of these organizations. We had, this year we did Nixa Shares, which was for over Christmas where people could come from Nixa that didn't have Christmas presents that were on the way. One of the, one of the students that came in hadn't had Christmas last year. Why? Because they didn't have enough money to do it. And this year, because of the, the group that got together, truly because of Stephanie and her cohort, uh, we were able to make a difference for family after family. Over 100 families came and were blessed by the community, by us to make a difference in their lives. There's so many ways that we're serving, but I don't want you to think that it's only by outward serving. We also serve internally, welcoming people in and sharing all of the things that God's doing. We, we have people in the cafe. We have all of that going on. But you know what? We're not limiting this to the things that we're doing already. We're saying, hey, if there's another church or faith organization or atheist or agnostic organization that is doing good, be a part of it. Serve. Make a difference. Love people where they are. Maybe they won't be agnostic or atheist for that long. It's an opportunity to share love and grace. We, and we believe fully that we are not dictating what God is putting on your heart. 
we are not the ones that are, are directing the ship. Instead, we're trying to empower you because God has spoken to you and said, this is where I want you to serve. This is where your gifts will do the best good. And we're here to lift you up and encourage you and say, this is how we can help. We can support you with people. We have finances. We have all of these things. Let us know how you want to serve. And so that is core to who we are. We, we believe that you need to seek and serve others continually, and I love this word, radically. Why? Because Jesus did that for us. He gave his life so that we might come to life. And so he serves us through everything. So someone calls, crazy, answer it. You see somebody broken down on the side of the road and you're like, well, I could probably help. Don't just zip right on by hoping that somebody else might do something. Let's serve one another. Now, I've had lots of people that are like, well, that's not safe. I didn't say it was. Jesus would agree with you. It's not safe, but it makes a difference. So we need to stay ready, finally, stay ready to serve. Because if it's unplanned, it's going to be inconvenient. But if you make your priority the flexibility to serve others, things are going to be different. You're not going to be as, well, that's just darned inconvenient. You're going to be able to say, you know, I could, I could maybe lend a hand. What can I do? How can I help? There's so many ways. And Jesus says, Jesus says that service is counted for us. Uh, there's a parable in the New Testament that he gives. Uh, it comes in Matthew's gospel in the 25th chapter. He's talking about what it looks like at the end of days, that there will be a judgment of people. And he says, there's going to be some folks that are going to be there. And, and, and I, I'm going to ask them. I'm paraphrasing and putting Jesus in it instead of the way that he talks about it. I'm going to ask them, hey, uh, you, or I'm going to invite them. Come on in. Because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. When I was having a hard time, you were there for me. And they're going to say, when did we see you? When did we see you hungry? When did we see you thirsty? When did we see you in prison? And, and Jesus, the king, will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, Brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Jesus says it's important we serve because we have been served. <laughs> Who's the least of these brothers and sisters of mine? People, humans, outside of this place, inside this place, everywhere we go. We can make a difference for God's kingdom by serving others. And we can start right now. We can welcome one another. We can encourage one another. We can restore one another. And friends, we can serve one another to build God's kingdom in this place. Not waiting for some distant time, but instead taking action right here and right now to build God's kingdom, a better place filled with grace and hope and love, regardless of your political view, regardless of your view on economics, regardless of your nationality, skin color, age, or any other thing that we like to put in that caveat spot. I'm going to remember caveat spot from now on. We need to be the church, living boldly, loving people where they are, and making a difference for Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Holy One, <laughs> it's not easy to do all that you have called us to. You have invited us to be a part of something so much bigger than ourselves. And sometimes it can look overwhelming that there's too much to do, too many things that are going wrong. Back us up and help us to focus on the One. Who is the One that we can serve? Who is the One that we can make a difference for? Who is the One that you want us to be in contact with so that we can build your kingdom one moment at a time, one interaction at a time, one person at a time so that we can love people where they are. We can share your love and grace and together we can journey.
toward Jesus. Make it be so now and always in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all of us agreed and said, Amen.